Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement called the White River Line, inspired by the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks. Well, after a little bit of a break for some family stuff, I'm back at it, working on the Coaling Tower. And this is really probably the biggest project I've worked on so far, as far as structures go. Um, but with the main assembly done in the last couple of videos, I'm ready to start working on some of the detail pieces, some stairs, railings, and the coal chutes. I'm also looking to finish up all of the assembly and get this project completely done in this video. So let's jump on into it. I'd already started some prep for the coal chutes in my previous video. They've got some very thin pieces for the lever fulcrums and the gate levers, and when clipping the parts for the chutes, I damaged a couple of the fulcrums and stopped to reassess my strategy. I was also debating with myself if I wanted to do primer and base paint while some of these small bits were still attached to the sprues. I started filing and prepping some of these parts while on the sprues, but as I worked, I realized that getting to all of the flashing and molding lines was going to be pretty difficult. Which was going to be more difficult, frustrating, and tedious. Filing these pieces while they were still attached to the sprues, or airbrushing these pieces when removed from the sprues. I guess I still don't have a definitive answer to this question, but in the end I decided to clip, file, and then paint them, rather than keeping them attached. Let me know in the comments below how you would have approached this. In addition to clipping and filing, I also glued together the pulleys. Once all this was complete, I started to get ready for paint. I have some sticky back foam board lying around from an old craft project, so I attach some of the pieces to this so the airbrush doesn't blow them around. For some of the larger pieces, I used some sticky tack and attached little skewers to them for painting. I have two finishes here, wood and iron. Although I worked on these parts in tandem, I'll discuss them separately. The iron pieces were pretty straightforward. I started with a light gray primer. Then I used Tire Black from Mission. It's a very dark gray. I chose not to use black because then I'd have no way to simulate darker shadows if I started with the darkest paint I have. At this point I referred back to the only prototype picture I have of an iron coal chute in color. Not much to work with, so I'll have to use my imagination a little. Some of these pieces all weather now, and some all wait until they are glued in place. I started with a dry brushing of sky gray on the sheets and the counterweights. Then I added a filter of dark rust on the chutes. I started adding a dark wash, but I found this actually reactivated the tire black from Mission, and my primer started to show through. Thankfully, I caught it before I applied the washes to all pieces. So I had to back up a bit and reapply the tire black. Next, I applied a matte clear coat to all the pieces. Then I went back to the affected piece and reapplied the dry brushing and the rust wash. For now, I'm going to skip the dark gray wash. I used brown iron oxide pigments for some rust effects. I also used some carbon black pigment to simulate coal dust. Then, a matte clear coat. However, this time the matte clear coat gave me some hazing. So I covered that up with a bit more black pigment. 
This is really all the painting I'm going to be doing on the iron for now. So let's shift gears to my wood pieces. I started with Israeli sand gray primer, then a base coat of concrete. Then I painted individual boards with wood, golden brown, and light brown. If you watched my previous videos for this project, this is probably sounding familiar. I use the same technique here, so if you'd like more detail, you can go back and watch part two. I only painted light brown boards on the platforms and the stairs. The railings only got wood and golden brown. But I did dry brush the railings with light brown afterwards. Next I used a Teeling 502 brown wash. I thinned it with some odorless thinner as a wash for all these pieces. For these tiny pieces, this application was pretty sloppy. But after 45 minutes of drying, I came back in with a dry brush and evened it out and softened out the sloppiness. As you can see, holding these tiny pieces while doing this work left some fingerprints. But no worries, I feathered this out with the dry brush. Now I'm ready for some assembly along with a little bit more weathering. I started with some of the parts that will be inside the tower, beginning with a couple of pieces that I probably should have installed before I did the paint and weathering of these large sub-assemblies, the pulley blackboards. I dry fitted the pulleys and found I needed to enlarge the holes they fit into. Next I moved onto the coal bin section of the tower and added the coal chutes. I had waited to add the lever fulcrums and gate levers until now. Like I said before, I wasn't confident I could get the angles right, and I didn't want to risk breaking them during painting. So I installed the chutes first, and then the fulcrums and gate lever. This all went more smoothly than I anticipated. Next, I installed this second set of pulleys. You might have noticed I forgot to paint the fulcrums, so I quickly added some tire black to them. Then I did a little dry brushing with the sky gray like I did with the shoots. While the bin and conveyor sections of the tower are still separate, I used some black to add some coal dust to the base and the bottom portions of the towers. Now it was time to start the rigging. I cut several lengths of the black thread that was included in the kit. This rigging is going to be a bit fiddly, since some of it is routed through parts of the bin section of the tower and the conveyor section of the tower. I did add some lines to the fulcrum of the chute, but 
somehow that footage got messed up. I was a bit nervous about this portion of the assembly, but it all went really well. With the main tower section assembled, I added the sides for the head house. Next, I added the braces for the platform on the front of the tower. I also added the pulleys. I took a second to add some sky gray dry brushing to all these iron parts, including the iron beams from the coal bin. Then I added the platform on the front. Next I glued the front chutes in place, including the fulcrums and the gate levers. I did some touch-up painting, but I'm going to hold off on the rigging for now. Now, another set of steps I'm nervous about. The stairs and the railings. I decided to work top-down. The top section of stairs and railings went pretty smoothly. The next section was a little more difficult. I added the extension for the base, and the supports for the first landing, and the landing itself. Then I glued the back railing to the middle section of stairs. As I was attempting to add this middle section of the stairs, I broke off the second landing and one of the pulleys near it. Slow down. Take your time, Drew. Now, with the stairs and railings in place, I was in the home stretch. I added some obtilum bitum near all of the iron parts.
As you can see, I used a bit too much AC glue in some spots, so I added another matte clear coat to cover this up. I ended up needing to use a brush on it in some places. Now I was ready to do the rigging on the front coal chutes. Finally, it was time to do the roof pieces. I started with a light gray primer. Then I slightly lightened up some black with a little bit of white for the base color. I'm keeping it simple for the roof and started with a dry brushing of sky gray. Next, I dry brushed with dark earth. However, this wasn't quite what I was looking for. It was a bit too dark. So I dry brushed on some concrete, and I was done with these parts. Again, simple. I'm going to keep the roof separate for now. I might add some interior details on the head house, and I want to keep some access on the dump shed for when I detail this on the layout. I haven't done a final wash for this piece yet. I'm still contemplating, but it does feel a bit too pristine at the moment. I will add some more environmental details, but I'm waiting until it's on the layout so it will blend in with its surroundings. So for now, this is done. Thanks for joining me on this episode. It has taken me a bit longer to get this piece done than I anticipated, and I'm ready to move on. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Those links are in the description below, along with a list of supplies and tools I use. I've also included a link for an Amazon wish list. If you'd like to support my channel and my railroad, I'd be grateful for anything on that list. I'm planning on getting back to some track work in the next episode, so please join me again next time as I continue modeling the White River Line.